Um, so that's really, I want to leave five minutes here so we can all give takeaways. And I'll start, and then you guys, and you can chime in again with the ones you gave before there, Caitlin. Um, but from the um, perspective, excuse me, in terms of the two topics I talked about, um, in terms of due diligence, I would say that conducting due diligence on behalf of a buyer without a complete checklist, which most importantly clearly assigns responsibility and prominently displays the deadlines for everything, is hazardous to your health and your practice. Um, the one thing you don't want to hear from your client at the closing is, I thought you were taking care of that. Very important. Uh, closing process, um, my takeaway there would be that lenders counsel will always act like they're running the show until a critical item is missing at the closing and then suddenly it's the buyer's counsel's fault. So as buyer's counsel, you want to still take ownership of the closing. Yes, you have to defer to some degree to lenders counsel, but you can't just expect them to take responsibility. They may not know everything that's needed. So make sure that um, the, you're really taking ownership and uh, staying on top of the closing, even while lenders counsel claims that they're running the show. And any other takeaways for us here? No, you want to mention your takeaways again? Yeah, here? so for the purchase and sale agreement, we talked about starting with the right form, because that'll save you tons of time. And for the loan, from lender's perspective, you're focused on the collateral, and from borrower's perspective, focused on making sure you can, you know, you get the flexibility to do what you need to do day to day without constantly calling the lender. And the only thing I would add to that is uh, get cure rights. Yes, cure rights. Always can make it better after the fact. <laughs> How about in the permitting world? Uh, you know, I emphasize a lot in my section, but I, I, I think it's there's so many moving parts in a, in a development project with so many different teams. So I think communication between yourself and the rest of the team is important because it's easy for a lot of things to fall through the cracks. You know, if you need exercise, like, you know, it's easy for you as a transactional attorney to not know exactly where things stand with a permitting standpoint because that's being handled by the engineers and the developers and the local council. And um, again, I raised some issues that you can come up to in your due diligence that they need to know about. It's important to keep that line of communication going. And off the offer world, I would say maybe don't get bound until you want to be bound. Yeah, don't be. Think about whether whether or not you want to be bound, and and be clear about it. Good. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any online, but.